All right, let's try this again. Um, looks like microphone is on, so I won't have that mistake like I did last night. If you want all the notes, I'll just leave it like this for a sec. Boom, there it is. Pause the video, get them down. All right, uh, we're going to do these notes on page 21. It says experimental design part two, basically. Um, if you want to know how this compares to the notes on page 19, really all we are doing is focusing on what this would look like. So. After you have some kind of hypothesis, what would the experiment part actually look? How, when you design an experiment, what, what's going to make it a good experiment? Okay, so here we go. Um, the first couple of things that you need to be aware of is we have two different types of variables. All right, we have an independent variable and a dependent variable. Um, the independent variable is the one that, like, if you want to do a test, you yourself, as the scientist or whatever the experimenter, you can you can change it. All right. The dependent variable, it says it's what's being tested or measured as a result of that. So if you make some kind of change in the independent variable, we want to know what's going to happen on the dependent variable side. Okay, here's the example from today. All right, we have this thing about the rock and John Cena, right? The independent variable could be the rock eating protein and John Cena eating all carbs. So what would be the dependent variable? What are we trying to see if the rock eats all protein and John Cena eats all carbs? We want to see how much they bulk up. And we can't just say, oh, it's how much they bulk up. Like, what? how do you define that, right? So what we would define that as is a bunch of different things. Maybe we would want to see what their overall weight gain is. So the dependent variable could be their weight gain, right? The one that gains more weight is the one that bulked up better, I guess, as a result of the protein or the carb diet. Um, we could measure body mass index. We could measure fat percentage. There are a whole bunch of ways. We could measure their ability to, I don't know, lift a certain amount of weight a certain number of times. There are a whole bunch of different dependent variables we can do. You guys kind of would choose that in your experiment. It's like, okay, um, you know, simple lame one. We got a plant. We're going to give it water, all right? Based on the amount of water, I want to see how tall it grows. The independent variable is how much water you choose to give it. All right? The dependent variable is how tall it's going to get. All right, here. Uh, other than that, we have two different types of groups. Okay, we have experimental groups and we have control groups. The experimental groups, it says the one that got the independent variable. Okay, so it's who you're doing the test on. So again, in the case of this, both of these are independent variables. We're doing really weird stuff to both of them. The rock is eating all protein. John Cena is eating all carbs. I am hoping sincerely that none of you watching this video eat only protein or only carbs. If you only eat carbs, you're going to have diabetes. If you eat only protein, you're going to be constipated, right? So good luck with either of those two things, I guess. All right. So what you need to have is something called a control group. So I'm calling it the group that's most like the normal situation. So you would think what a normal diet is. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the normal diet is considered like uh, 40, 40, 20, like 40% carbs, 40% protein, and 20% fat, okay? So we don't even have fat in the equation right now. So without that control group, we wouldn't know how to compare anything to, right? Um, example, if we're looking at The Rock and John Cena. Let, let, let's, let's play out some numbers here. Let's say The Rock, most of you probably today have agreed that The Rock will gain more muscle because protein is muscle, right? Meat is protein, protein is muscle. Um, so let's say The Rock, after doing some lengthy experimentation of him eating an all-protein diet, I don't know, gains 30 pounds. Let's say John Cena in that same amount of time gains 20 pounds. Okay, if The Rock gains 30 and John Cena gains 20, you might be like, oh, the all-protein diet, that's the one to go with. Okay, it's way better than what John Cena eats. But then if you have someone that's the control group, say me, well, a much bigger version of me, like a rock-sized version of me, and I'm eating 40, 40, 20, 40% 40 carbs, 40% protein, 20% uh, fat, and let's say instead of 30 pounds, let's say I gain 50 pounds of muscle. So what have we just found out? Both of these two diets are terrible, which some of you guys have said today. The Rock's diet isn't that good, John Cena's diet isn't that good, and they would have been better off just eating a regular, as defined by, you know, um, um, the ADA or not, I don't the ADA, the, the Dietary Association, the, the 40 40 20 diet, and you would have gained way, way more weight. So that's what the control group does. Okay, we want to know like what things are in like regular life so that we can see if these changes actually matter. Okay, without that, you might have a whole bunch of like false uh, con <coughs> conclusions that you draw. 
Okay, so again, if all we had were The Rock and John Cena, The Rock gains 30, John Cena gains 20, then you're like, oh, okay, well, The Rock had a better diet, let's eat only protein. We bring the control group in, you're like, whoa, 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 same amount of time, this guy just gained like 50 pounds, straight muscle. Then you found out that now the control group is the more important one, okay, and the experimental group, those manipulated independent variables that you did to The Rock and John Cena, they were actually overall worse. One was more worse Ugh. one was worser <laughs> one was not as good as the other you know one had more detrimental effects uh, but it is what it is okay so what's the last part this is the one that kind of throws people off the most we have this stuff called control variables or control factors and it says it's all the other things that have to be remain the same between your groups it says if you change too many factors you don't know which one caused your results okay so if you think about this experiment right here you would have to think about all of this other stuff that you have to keep the same besides their diet so that you know that it's just the diet that is changing their bulkiness or their weight gain or whatever. All right, here's some examples. What if we say, hey, Rock, eat all protein. Hey, John Cena, eat all carbs. Okay, now The Rock, what I want you to do, I want you to work out three days a week, uh, an hour a day, and you know do all upper body lifting type stuff and then john cena's like all right what do you want me to do and you're like i have nothing let's chill at home okay which one's gonna get, get bigger mass it's gonna be the rock for sure because he's actually exercising he's actually working out john cena's just being lazy like most of you guys okay so um that that would definitely affect the results of the experiment um let's say we do have both of them working out it's like hey rock i want you to work out three days a week for an hour every day and John Cena, I want you to do the same thing. Three days a week, one hour every day. Rock's like, got it. Okay, tell Rock that he's going to do that same heavy upper body lifting. And John Cena's like, what do you want me to do? And you're like, why don't you go run for an hour each day? Just run for an hour. Which one's going to get bulkier, right? The Rock is definitely going to get bulkier. John Cena is going to look like one of those skinny Olympic cross-country whatever marathon runners right he's not gonna get that bulky because he's doing more cardio than than bulk building exercises okay um, you're gonna tell the rock to eat all protein you're gonna tell John Cena to eat all carbs but the rock is only gonna eat 100 calories he would die John Cena is gonna eat like 5,000 calories he's gonna be obese right the amount that they eat is also gonna matter so these things are called control factors the only thing you want to change is the protein the independent variable everything else has to be as the same as you possibly can right so that's why in this example right here i chose two wrestlers even the rock and john cena okay in third period i was like what about kofi kingston he is way smaller than these guys okay he probably wouldn't be a good comparison i intentionally tried to choose two bigger wrestlers two wrestlers that are kind of on the same level of bulk right so you would have to do that even Okay, if you compared me eating all protein to the rock eating carbs, he's going to be bigger than me because I'm a small guy already, right? So um, hopefully that makes sense, all right? I don't want to go through more examples because I feel like I'm just overdoing it at this point. If you have questions, hopefully we will figure that out during our Apple a Day activity. Okay, bye.